Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to church. Boy, and we got the heat today, don't we? But that's okay because we got the Holy Spirit too. He's in control of all these things that's going to happen today. He's going to be steering our worship. He's going to be steering the conversation. He's going to be steering the fellowship. And it's just going to be a blessed day. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this day, Lord. For all that will come with it, for this fellowship, Lord, for this time of worship with you, Lord, to encounter you and experience your presence in this hour, Lord. These are the reasons we come, and these are the reasons we give you thanks and praise. So we commit this time to you, Lord, that in this hour you would have your way with us, that you would lead us in your ways and uh, by your word, Lord, as we lift up your word today and declare your word, and Lord, the message that goes with it, we just ask you bless all of it, Lord. And just let it, Lord, uh, work in our hearts, in our minds, in our spirit, Lord, the way we need to work it. So we thank you, Lord, and we commit this time to you. And in doing so, we give you all thanks, all praise, and all glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Can you hear me? Okay. Good morning. Um, I just want to go through our news and announcements, just a few of them. Uh, if you'll notice, there's a lot of opportunities to serve in the bulletin this week. Our annual ice cream social and silent auction has been set for Thursday, July 29th, and the ice cream is needed. So now it's, now it's the time to start preparing your favorite ice cream recipes. Ice cream tubs have been set out for you to take home and fill up. Also, Klesha has tickets avail available for you to sell in the community. If you have not picked up your tickets to sell, see Klesha after church. And Vacation Bible School, so excited about this, it's been set for the week of August the 2nd. VBS will be held from 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Carol Lake and Susan Janice have selected Wildwood Forest VBS, Discover the Untamed Nature of God, as our VBS curriculum. We are very excited to host Vacation Bible School this year. Carol and Susan are looking for more volunteers of all generations to help with VBS. If you know any high school seniors looking for a service looking for service project points, CBS will help them meet their goals. If you are available to help or know someone is who is, please see Carol or Susan and let them know. And there is that's going to be empty opportunities to serve in your bulletin. Related to Vacation Bible School, we will be collecting a special offering this week and the next two weeks to support our VBS program, which is being offered at no charge for all who want to join. Following VBS, we are preparing to launch a Sunday school program for K through fifth grade. Offerings exceeding our VBS expenses will be applied to starting a new Sunday school program. We had so much fun watching Movies on the Lawn last month, we decided to do it again. Our next night for Movies on the Lawn will be Friday, August 6th. This is also our last day of VBS, and we're planning to have the VBS kids do a presentation before the movie. VBS presentations will begin at 8, and the movie will follow at 8.30. Mark your calendar and plan to join us for a night at the movie. The movie title is To Be Determined. And oh, today after church, we are celebrating the dads today, so make sure you stay and have a hot dog and hamburger or what we, I'm not sure what Steve's cooking up. Hot dog and hamburger. Hot dog and hamburger, okay. Um, our church council, our upcoming meetings, church council will meet Tuesday, July 13th at 7, and our trustees will be meeting Tuesday, July 27th at 7. All the meetings are held in the Education Building Conferencing Room and also via Zoom in case you can't make it in person. And today we celebrate birthdays. Pastor Bob's going to lead us. No. Um, <laughs> today we have, for the month of July, we have Zach Britton on the 6th and Regina last week on the 6th also. Matthew Martinez today. Happy birthday, Matthew. Hope you can hear us. Brittany Wood is the 12th and Tiffany also the 12th. Kelly Correa, the 21st, Morris Ledford, the 24th, and Michael Molina, the 28th. And then we also, oh, you want to see first? We'll go through anniversaries. Okay, anniversaries are Rod and Carol are coming up on the 14th. Who's like just celebrating it? Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And Craig and Margie Knight on the 21st, and Stephen Pusha on the 22nd of the time. So. We're just going to have to do this a cappella since we don't have our company is today. But let's sing and celebrate our celebrants today. Are you ready? Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. For our anniversaries. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. Amen. God bless 
get on you all night long. <laughs> all year long. All year long. <laughs> so now let us stand as you are willing and able as the Spirit moves you as we sing our opening hymn, Majesty, Worship His Majesty.
Would you get those light switches in the back for me, please? We have only half our lighting on. Let's uh, bring the light into this place, shall we? Amen. We light it up. We light it up good. Lord, we thank you, Lord, once again. Oh, Lord, even as we worship and we praise you, we experience your presence. We encounter you, Lord, from the inside out, Lord, as we lift up your name on high. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you, Lord, and we magnify you, Lord. And we come before you, Lord. We come before you with hearts full of praise and worship, and Lord, we've got hearts full of prayers as well. Lord, we got things to celebrate. Lord, so many things to celebrate, especially following this past year, Lord. We praise you and glorify you for all your blessings in our lives. And Lord, there's, there's things still that we're wrestling with. Things, Lord, we're still working out things that are weighing heavy upon us, Lord, and we set that before you, Lord. That through your mercy and your grace, Lord, your will and your purpose for our lives will be lived out. So I invite you who are here today to lift up your prayers, your joys, and your concerns to our Lord, our God. We have any prayers and joys and concerns you'd like to lift up this day. We shall. truly a community event in every way. Praise God. And the prayers.
Yeah, we thought it was just two, but it was like five different things combined in one. They didn't want to send him home the first day, and he was trying to tell us something. I think he was trying to tell us it was here or whatever. And he said, let me go be home. I was like, what are you saying? <laughs> and um, yeah, that's Joy. And my uncle Carl, they're in the last stages of getting the, going to get the surgery. They're getting tested one more time before they just to be sure. And prayers for my cousin Andy. Um, there's a lot of things that are going on in his life right now. Um, one of the things is they're trying to move here to get closer to the family. And I told them when they move here, I'm going to move there. <laughs> but um, yeah, there's prayers for them because I know it's going to be a lot of looking for a house here and all that. Amen. Amen. Um, well, I um, prayed that uh, my trip to Seattle with my grandson, everything went well. And we did what we needed to do, which was the getting the apartment, you know, settled or whatever. Anyway, so that was great. We got home and everything. Um, now I just have to get used to this heat again because when we left Seattle yesterday morning, it was 55 degrees, <laughs> and I came home to what 105 plus. So. Uh, anyway, uh, but I have a concern. I have a little thing on my on my hand that I thought the dermatologist took care of, but no, it's still there and whatever. So I'm going back again tomorrow. So. It's just, you know, it's a little thing, but it's a big thing because it's on my right hand, and just I hope that with God and the doctors, they can take care of this and get it, get it on the way. Amen, <laughs> amen, for God's healing. Yep. yep. Amen. I want to share a testimony uh, in answered prayers for all those who've been joining in prayer for this church fellowship. So I had the joy of meeting with Pastor Ron and, and John yesterday, the three of us, and we sat down and we prayed together and we worked through what the Lord wants us to do together. And you know, and I thought, well, this is just the beginning. We're going to go into a season of prayer. And we're going to start working and visioning and see what God might have us do together. But I know it's going to be time. You know, it will come soon. That's okay, because it's God's timing. Well, God decided September 4th. Ah. <laughs> because already the Full Gospel Church is planning an event with Warriors of Faith at Maldonado Park on uh, September 4th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And, and they're going to be uh, having, I think they have four praise bands out there. Uh, there's going to be many preachers. I'm going to get out there and I'm going to share my testimony along with the gospel. And this is a testimony you haven't heard before, so you might want to come and check it out. <laughs> and uh, so there'll be many speakers, uh, praise uh, music as well. Um, there'll be uh, prayer and anointings. And then they're also going to bless bikes and lowriders. So if you have a motorcycle, if you have a lowrider, you can bring it on down. We'll just come down and enjoy all the cars and the bikes that are there. Uh, it'll be an amazing thing for God, even as we've been praying for this, even as we haven't seen what he was doing, he was working in the background the whole time. Amen? Amen. Amen. So again, this is just the beginning of what God wants to see happening more and more in our community. And I invite you to continue in prayer. That God will have his way in this. There will be anointing in this and outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And who knows? Maybe there will even be baptisms. Who knows? We'll see. The river must be awfully nice right now, huh? Um, Sounds good. All right. So let's all keep that in prayer. Linda. Um, can we also pray for myself? Because I know school's going to be starting soon. And I'm not the type of person that wants to be around So, Lord, we lift up all these prayers as we continue to pray for our nation, Lord, for we know 
many prayers needed here, Lord. There's much work that needs to be done. There's so much need for reconciliation in our country, for coming to agreement in so many ways, Lord. Lord, I refuse to give up on this because I know through you all things are possible. So, Lord, we continue to pray over our nation. Lord, we continue for you to raise up people through your church. And, Lord, even raise them up into the office of politics. Where, Lord, we can have an influence on our country. Lord, that would influence in your ways, Lord. And reconciliation and love and peace, Lord. Compassion and grace, Lord. This is what we pray for our nation, Lord. And so, Lord, we just continue to pray that you would use our churches, Lord, that you would use your good word, Lord, to bring our, our nation together. Because we know, Lord, when your word is spoken, it does not go out, it does not return empty, Lord, but it returns full of life. So we thank you, Lord, and we praise you, Lord. We continue to pray over all the nations, Lord, where there is uh, violence, Lord, and destruction, Lord. We pray for peace, Lord, and, and rebuilding, Lord, for restoration, Lord, where people have been displaced with Lord, we pray that you give them roots, Lord, and if possible, Lord, and if it's their desire to even return them when their homeland is safe to return to you, Lord. And above all, Lord, we pray for all of your workers in the world, all of your missionaries in the world, Lord, all those you've sent out to the nations to bring your word to those who have not known you, Lord, so that they may have the hope that we have. They may share in your salvific grace, Lord, the same that we have. So we thank you, Lord, for me. Praise you, and Lord, we pray that you bless them, Lord. We continue to bless them and continue the work that they have been doing, especially our own uh, missionary, Hannah Jadine, Lord, that you continue just to bless her and those that she has served there. As she's coming home, Lord, just bless those families, Lord, and let them continue to be convicted by your Holy Spirit in their faith and in their love for you. And so we pray for the incoming missionaries there, Lord, and pray that, Lord, they will quickly step up, Lord, into ministry, into the same way, and continue the work, Lord, that those so desperately needs to be done. So we thank you, we praise you for all these things, Lord, and for all these things, we pray together as one body in Christ Jesus, praying together the way your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. We pray. Amen. Now we have a special offering for our Vacation Bible School. So if we can have a couple people come and collect, and uh, everything that goes in will go directly to uh, serving the children in our community through the VBS program. And if we collect extra, it's going to go into supporting a Sunday school program that we're planning for the fall. A lot of exciting things God's doing in our midst. Amen? Amen. Oh God, we thank you for these gifts. We thank you for the people who have given them, Lord, and the Lord. We thank you for those for whom it is given. Lord, this is your ministry to your children. We're just a part of your story, Lord. So we ask you to bless this Vacation Bible School. We ask you to bless those who are organizing it and planning it, Lord. Bless those who will be leading it and participating in it, Lord. Lord, just bless this church and this community in every way that they will be able to participate in the blessing 
of this vacation Bible school, Lord. And we even pray, Lord, that you'd send up your spirit out into the community and stir the hearts of those who you want to participate, Lord. And you made it to us and made it to this opportunity. And for all these things, Lord, we give you thanks, we give you praise, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, and this scripture. So using your own Bible or a few Bibles, I invite you to open to Zechariah 7, 4 through 10, a call for justice and mercy. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Say to all the people in the land and to the priests, When you fasted and lamented during the fifth and seventh months, for these seventy years, did you really fast for me? And when you eat and when you drink, do you not eat and drink for yourselves? Were these not the very words that the former prophets proclaimed when Jerusalem dwelt with Eve along with her surrounding cities, and when the Negev and the lowland were inhabited? And the word of the Lord came to Zechariah, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Execute true justice, show mercy and compassion, every man to his brother. Do not oppress the widow, orphan, sojourner, or poor. And let none of you contemplate evil deeds in your hearts against his brother. Will you please stand as you're willing and able for a second reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 16 through 18 teaching about fasting. Moreover, when you fast, do not be like hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces so they may appear to men to be fasting. Truly I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that you will not appear to men to be fasting, but to your Father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you be in prayer with me, please? Lord, we come before you because we desire to know you more deeply and more widely. So we meditate, Lord, on the word that's been read and the message that's been prepared. Lord, we, we pray that you will prepare our hearts and our minds to receive exactly what you want us to receive this day. Lord, let us be attuned to the work of your Holy Spirit in this hour and convict us, Lord, in the ways that you will. And raise our spirits, Lord, and form us and shape us, Lord, for the purpose for which you have created us. And for this, Lord, we give you thanks and praise. And it is my prayer, Lord, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts will be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. One of my favorite Christian organizations of all time is World Vision. You know World Vision? Yes. I think you do because you've done 30-hour famines, right? Yes. I just love the 30-hour famine and the work that World Missions does, the awareness that it creates, and the way that they go into the nations, into the impoverished nations to build sustainable communities, teaching them how to grow crops and how to raise animals, and then teaching them how to multiply that so they can teach others to do the same one sustainable community teaching another to become a sustainable community. And it's just amazing, amazing work. And I've done 30-hour famines, I don't know how many. I'm up in Nevada City, and I've done them in Fair Oaks, and I know you've done them here. And they're just such an important part of the ministry of the church as, as a, an example, a model for us of how important, of what impact fasting has when we couple it with prayer and we couple it with the work and ministry of the church. Amen? And so we fast and we fast with a purpose when we do this. We fast with a purpose to create awareness for the needs that are in the world. We fast with a purpose inviting God into that process so that he's the one who's leading the process in every way physically and spiritually and every other way around that. And we fast with a purpose to learn a new dependence on God. That in those times when we feel like we're without, 
And we don't have enough to give that God sustains us in those moments. And we'd have a lot of fun. There'd always be a lot of games and a lot of activities. But the more important parts were the way we incorporated scriptures and the teachings that went along with it. And the discussions were just phenomenal, always so rich. And of course, infused with prayer and with fellowship. And then at the end of the 30 hours, we get to break that fast with a love feast sitting around the Lord's table, breaking the bread, sharing in the cup, and then enjoying some homemade soup and bread to go with it as we break our fast. Through fasting during the 30-hour famine, there's an increase in awareness for compassion in the world, but more so, fasting creates awareness of God's steadfast love, His sustaining grace, and His presence in our lives. And so I invite you to open up your Bibles to our readings from Zechariah this morning. Zechariah chapter 7. Verses 4 and 5. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Say to all the people in the land and to all the priests, when you fasted and lamented during this fifth and seven months for these 70 years, did you really fast for me? This book of, of Zechariah gives us a window into the post exilic period in Jerusalem when the exiles from Babylon have returned to the city. It happened in the fourth year of King Darius the king that, that was prophesied to release the captives from Babylon and return them to Jerusalem. It was the year 518 BCE, before Christ, before the Common Era. And they were in the process of rebuilding the temple. And they were also working on building their houses and, and planning for the, the building, the rebuilding of the wall. And in the midst of this, per the law of Moses, the Israelites continued as they had been called to do, to fast once a year on the Day of Atonement, which is in the seventh month. But following the destruction of the Jewish temple, the destruction of Jerusalem, the Jews had added a fifth feast, a fifth month for fasting. And they did this to remember the destruction of their holy city and God's temple by Nebuchadnezzar's Babylonian army. So while they were in exile in Babylon, they would continue to fast on the fifth and then the seventh month. But now they're back in Jerusalem, and the temple is being rebuilt. And the people began asking, is it necessary? Is it necessary for us to continue fasting on this fifth month? Now that everything is being restored. And in asking this question, they were revealing their heart attitudes. And so God called them out on them. He said, when you were fasting all those years, those 70 years, and lamenting, were you really doing it for me? Or was it more about you? The Israelites, while in captivity and after returning to Jerusalem, had lost their sincere desire for a loving relationship with God. They had been fasting without a proper attitude of repentance and an attitude of worship. Their fasting was not acceptable because it was done with the wrong attitude and the wrong motives. They were going through a, a formal routine. They were going through the motions without any real hunger, without any real thirst for God, without a desire to accomplish His purpose. They were fasting and mourning not for God's desires, but for their own. Fasting and mourning for their own liberation without even considering, without contemplating what caused the exile in the first place. 
complacent and rebellious, rebellious hearts. And so what was the response of the people to Zechariah's message? I'll draw your attention to verse 11 in chapter 7. And it says, They refused to pay attention, and they turned a stubborn shoulder, and they stopped their ears so that they should not hear. Verse 12, they made their hearts hard like diamonds so as not to hear the instruction and words that the Lord of hosts sent by his spirits through the former prophets. And there was great anger from the Lord of hosts. So when you come to church, and when you pray, and when you're spending time in fellowship with other believers, are you doing this out of habit? Or are you doing it with a heart attitude to draw closer to God and closer in Christian fellowship within a body of believers? And as response to the Israelite, God reveals to us that an attitude of worship without a sincere desire to know and love Him will lead to ruin in our lives, in our homes, in our church, and in our community. You see, fasting in itself is a form of worship. It's an expression of obedience. And it's a means of growing in relationship with our Lord, our God. For whom do we fast? We fast unto the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. God sent his prophets to his people for a purpose. For a purpose to call them into repentance that they may return to the Lord with a devoted heart. To elicit a sincere response from the people towards God, calling them into repentance and into forgiveness. That is, calling them into reconciliation with God through fasting and through prayer. Praying for God's help to form them and shape them into living a life that is pleasing to God. And a life that He can use life that he can use for his glory and for his purposes and for the benefit of others for the common good in this God declares to us and through this means of sacrifice and prayer that he will equip us to live a life that promotes justice and compassion and mercy the more we act upon the word of God, the more compassion and mercy that we will see in our communities, more justice will be prevailed in our lives, in our families, and in our communities. And we see that in verse 9 and 10 in Zechariah. Thus says the Lord of hosts, execute true justice, show mercy and compassion every man to his brother. And when we couple fasting with prayer, everything becomes magnified. Amen? Amen. Amen. But what did Jesus say about fasting? Let us turn to our Gospel of Matthew, which we heard this morning, chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse 16. It says, Moreover, this is Jesus talking, right? Red letters. Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites. I love what he says here. When you fast, not if you fast, not for those who fast, but when you fast. In this, it's clear for us that every follower of Christ in his faith and living out their faith is expected to fast for the kingdom of God. We're expected to fast because that's what it takes to experience what God experiences as he's loving upon us, as he's equipping us and building us up and sending us out. When, not if. We 
see in scriptures, in the Old Testament, we see it in the New Testament, that there's fasting. And the fasting refers, in this case, in the biblical sense, to the discipline of abstaining for food for a limited time. Abstaining for food in order to give greater attention to spiritual matters. We don't fast without a purpose. We fast with a purpose. Our time without food should be an intense time of listening to God. A time of trying to gain a sense of His direction through His Holy Spirit. And a time of meditating on His Word, that is, setting time aside daily in your fast to read and meditate on the Word of God. Before Jesus began His ministry, He fasted in the wilderness for 40 days. And He taught us in the Gospels that Fasting should be a part of our Christian life and devotion towards God and an act of preparation for His return. So if you have your Bibles open to Matthew chapter 7, I'm going to ask you to turn over to chapter 9. We're going to take a look at verses 14 and 15. The question about fasting, Matthew 9, chapter, verse 14. Then the disciples of John came to him asking, Why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus answered, Can the guests of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them. And then, and then they will fast. Once again, it's clear that Jesus expects us as his followers to make fasting part of our live out faith life. To fast in obedience to God's word. To fast with a heart attitude to know and to glorify God. To fast for the sanctifying grace of God's Holy Spirit to form us and shape us more and more from one degree to glory to another into the image of Christ. For the Christian, fasting is an expression of our longing to be united with Christ now and when he comes. And God uses our longing for Christ as a means of preparing us. He uses his time in fasting, our longing, as a means of preparing us for his kingdom and for the second coming of Jesus. God uses his time of preparation to break our hearts to break our hearts the way his heart and Christ's heart breaks for those who are lost, for those who are forsaken by mankind, for those who are desperately in need of a Savior. Fasting unto the Lord for personal sanctification through the Holy Spirit is our expression of sorrow for sin and for sorrow for spiritual decay of the world. And it is our prayer that God will form us and shape us and use us to reach those who have been swallowed up by this decay. And so we fast. And we fast with a purpose. But fasting in itself has many purposes. We fast to honor God and to humble ourselves. We fast to put spiritual concerns above our own desires so that we may experience more of God's power and presence in our lives. We fast to mourn over sin and spiritual complacency. And we fast to seek God's undeserved favor and blessings in our lives through His grace to reaffirm our devotion for God and to be receptive, to be receptive to God working in our lives in new ways. We fast to deepen our relationship with God and strengthen our resistance against spiritual forces of evil. And we fast to show repentance, remorse for sin, a readiness to turn away from our own way and surrender every part of our lives to God individually and as a church. And there's more, which we'll cover in the coming weeks. And practically speaking, there's many ways to fast. Fasting in itself is abstaining from all or certain types of food, but there's different ways to do that. There's the normal fast, which is abstaining from all food, liquid and solid, but not water. These types of fast I might do for five or seven days. 
There's an absolute fast, abstaining from food and water, and this one you do for three days or less. And then there's a supernatural fast. As Moses on Mount Sinai and Jesus in the wilderness where they fasted for 40 days. This kind of fast you only do under the compulsion of the Holy Spirit. And there's partial fast, which is the restriction of a diet rather than complete abstention. That might look like just missing one meal a day. Or it might look like changing your diet, like doing the Daniel diet. It's a phenomenal diet to do during the fast. So if you're looking for alternatives, that's an excellent one to look at. And we can fast from abstaining from activities as well. If none of those other fasts work for you because of dietary needs, then we can abstain from certain activities, from social media, from news media. It's a good thing to fast from. And many other things, things that consume your life. But when we fast from those things, the time that we would have spent on those things is the time we spend in prayer, and the time we spend in God's Word, and the time we spend in devotion before God. There's going to be more to come on that, too. I think the most difficult part of the 30-hour famine was missing that first meal. This is when your stomach grumbles, when your hunger pains reverberate through your whole body, and you come to the realization of the sacrifice that you're making for God and of your dependence on his grace and mercy in your life. But once you move past that first meal, that first meal that you, that you gave up for God, and then you realize God's sustaining grace in you, physically and spiritually, then those hunger pains begin to diminish as you set your sights and your heart on God's presence and the transforming grace that is within your heart. And that is working transformation in your lives. So next week, I'm really excited to announce that we're going to have a guest speaker. And a speaker who's well-known and well-loved. We'll be inviting, or Steve and I are going to be going to uh, the Ogres Gate Renewal Conference, or Conference on Holy Spirit, living next week. And so I ask you that you keep us in prayer as we're traveling, and pray that God will work in us whatever he wants to work in us. Amen? Amen. And then be sure to come next Sunday and give a joyful welcome to Bill Magnuson, who many know as Coach Mag. He will be bringing a spirit-filled message to encourage you in the ways of God. And then following the two weeks after Coach Mag, we will be digging deeper into scriptures to understand the ways, means, and purposes for fasting. And if you're not able to attend in person, I want to emphasize, be sure to hear these messages online. I want you to get the complete message and teaching on fasting. There's only three of them. This is the first. But it's always better to attend in person. I just want to say that. Right? And then on August 29th, on August 29th, I will be calling for an all-church fast. And with the options available for fasting, everyone in our church will be able to join the fast, even if you're living with diabetes, even if you're living with hypoglycemia or other dietary restrictions. There is a fast available for you. And when the entire church fasts together, the presence and glory of God will become increasingly magnified in our lives, in the lives of our family, and in the lives of our community, and in the lives of our church. So you will be invited to fast and while fasting to pray daily for the event that's coming up on September 4th. For this Warriors of Faith movement. And we're going to pray. We're going to pray that God uses us to reach the lost souls. That he will reach people who are so desperately seeking them. And that they will be lifted up. And he will even send out his Holy Spirit in advance and start steering their spirit. And leading to, the, to those who will take them to this event. We're putting that event on their heart and then praying when they're at that event that Christ will convict them through his Holy Spirit in ways that will, will bring deliverance in their lives. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, when we couple fasting 
in prayer as a church for an event like this because it's worth the purpose. This is the purpose for deliverance from evil for those who have not yet been saved. Is there any other greater purpose? God acts in mighty ways when we do these things, and especially when we do it as a church. Amen? Amen. And then following the period of fasting, I will be excited. I'm going to be excited because I want to hear your testimonies of how you encountered God and Christ and the Holy Spirit in your experiences of fasting, and how God had shaped you, formed you, and blessed you through this experience. And then I hope you get to go on September 4th to the event and witness and see for yourself the effect and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that God will bring with it because of our obedience to His ways. Amen? God is moving. He is moving in mighty and powerful ways in our congregation because more and more the people in our congregation are spending time daily with God in word, in prayer, and in devotion. When we couple fasting with these other disciplines, the heavens will break open and God's Holy Spirit will be poured out over His people, filling Him with His power and His righteousness, equipping us to be the church God created us to be, a church actively working to advance His kingdom through His Spirit and by His power. Hallelujah. What greater thing is there than that? Who wouldn't want to be a part of that? Amen? So for all these things, all these things that God's done up until this point, and all these things that He's yet to do in this church and in this community, let us give Him all honor, glory, and praise. To God the Father, and to God the Son, to God the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Now we will take up our regular offering. If we may come up and pass the plates. These are the moments I miss our companies. <laughs> Would you please stand as you're willing and able as we lift that phrase and joy to God singing the doxology. chastened us. Your patience has borne with us and your love has redeemed us. Lord, give us a heart to love and to serve you and enable us to show our thankfulness for all your goodness and mercy by giving up ourselves to your service and cheerfully submitting in all things to your blessed will. Bless these gifts. Bless those whom have given these gifts and bless those for whom they are given. Lord, use it to advance your kingdom and to glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let us sing our closing hymn, Reckless Love. Thank you. 
Let us go in peace. Amen. Is the way. 